From North Carolina's news leader, this is WRAL TV5 News. The sights, the sounds, the smells. The 133rd North Carolina State Fair is here, and WRAL has it covered like you have never seen it before. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. The State Fair, of course, is a celebration of our past and our future. Today, we, along with you, are making history. You are watching the first ever entirely high-definition newscast. WREL and Panasonic are teaming up to give you the ride of a lifetime at the fair, and no tickets are needed. So strap yourself in. You're now a part of a brand new ride. Call it a time machine to the future of television. Let's see, signature. You're looking at one of the most important contract signings in broadcast history. Congratulations, I think. <laughs> WREL, a pioneer in high definition broadcasting, and Panasonic, agreeing to a multi million dollar deal that paves the way for TV5 to become the first television station in the country to convert its entire news operation to high definition. The big advantage to the quality of this new equipment in the field is that the quality of everything we do is better. He said everything, every story we do, all with the sharp contrast of high definition, even if you don't yet own an HD set. Even those people who have regular everyday TV sets and who have not gone to high definition will see an improvement in the video image from our newscast. Good evening, I'm Bill Leslie. WREL was the first television station in the country to broadcast an HD signal, and since that first transmission in 1996, we have brought viewers amazing pictures. From the moving of the Cape Light, to John Glenn's historic shuttle mission, to the Sistine Chapel, we have continued to lead in the advancement of this incredible technology. Throughout this journey, more and more people have seen the benefits of high definition, and they're singing its praises. As that happens, um, there'll be a greater push for, for local newscasts to be in high definition. The advantage we have is that we'll have the absolute head start. Now, the move to high definition will bring about great changes in WREL, including a brand new 24,000 square foot all digital studio. We'll give you a sneak peek in about 15 minutes. This will be the last state fair for Jim Graham as our agriculture commissioner. Whoever replaces him will have some pretty big shoes to fill. Scott Mason joins us live with more on Jim Graham. Scott. Pam, he wears a cattleman's hat and cowboy boots, but then Jim Graham has always dressed for success. He's the sod father, the state's longtime commissioner of agriculture and the proud papa of the state fair. The cart, the hat, the stogie. Hey, Paul. Jim Graham putters through the midway as he's done for 36 years. Hey, John. This isn't just a fair, but a love affair. You want me to kiss her? <laughs> a family reunion. No, she goes You're back right. a long way. It's not going to be the same. Oh, I'll be all right. Jim Graham is retiring soon, and somehow the fair won't be the same. You think this is the best state fair in the country? I think so. In fact, I know it is. If we have pretty weather like this for 10 days, I predict we'll break all records. They got a new ride called the Cliffhanger. Now, if you go look at it, you can ride it. I'm not going to ride it. And ham biscuits. You like those ham biscuits? Oh, you betcha. What do you put on those ham biscuits? Anything? A little touch of mustard, I do. I like to say this. If, if we ain't good out here at the fairground, you don't need it. Getting ready. Setting up. Think of all the memories stored beneath that Stetson. Hey there. One memory he cherishes most, the day he met his wife, met her at the fair by the old waterfall. What did you think when you first saw her? Oh, I said, that's it. <laughs> no, you know, it looked like a boat or lightning. The new waterfall is in memory of Mrs. Graham. There's an old Irish blessing the commissioner keeps in his office. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rain fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of his hand. Jim Graham is the longest serving agriculture commissioner in the country, been at it 36 years, but now his long legendary career is almost over. Graham will retire at the end of the year. Pam? Scott, thank you. And Mr. Commissioner, if you're watching out there, thank you for the memories, David. Well, whether you're riding or eating, you can rest assured everything here is safe. 
Inspectors have gone over everything at this fair with a fine tooth comb. Lynn Bestoff shows us. Labor Commissioner Harry Payne took a spin to demonstrate the safety of rides at the state fair. You need to adjust that one, don't you? That needs adjusting. Some don't get a passing grade from Payne's inspectors on the first go round. North Carolina has what's called a 100% rule. A ride like this, for instance, if one of the tubs had a bad lap bar or something, in most of the, in any state but North Carolina, they'll allow you to rope that tub off and not operate it. We won't do that. Now, besides the inspections of the rides, there's also inspections of the games of chance and the food. We're trying to make sure they maintain a temperature of at least 140 degrees. Rick Wagner is part of a team that's given operating permits to 150 vendors. Uh, every now and then we have a stand that, that gives us a problem with temperatures or uh, food handling, and, and we'd red flag those stands. Our goal at the State Fair is to make sure that uh, when people come to the fair, that they don't take foodborne illness home with them. Len Bestoff, WRAL TV 5 News. Now, as Len referenced, the games out here are tested to make sure they are winnable. Of course, that doesn't make sure that they're easy, but if I can win one, I guarantee you, you can as well. Well, all right then. You know, with all of these people out here, even the most careful parents can lose track of children. Coming up next on this history-making high-definition newscast from the fair, tips to help parents keep track of their children. Tonight on WRAL's 11 o'clock news. This kind of clock tells time, but what does your body clock tell you? Your body clock could be the key to relieving pain, telling you the best times to take medicine and exercise. Especially if your morning workout tends to be a drag. Plus, your body could help you get a good night's sleep. Learn to understand the clock, the body clock, in a WRAL 5 News Focus. Coverage you can count on. Tonight on WRAL's 11 o'clock news. Welcome back to the State Fair. You're looking live at what amounts to master control for the first ever all high definition newscast in the history of television. Now the crowds out here make it a challenge for parents to keep track of young children. And older kids don't always like to walk the fairgrounds with mom and dad. It's just not very cool. WRAL health team Dr. Alan Mask has some tips on keeping up with your youngsters. there's nothing better than the state fair. It ranks right up there with birthdays and Halloween, so it's no surprise that many wide-eyed children wander off from their parents. Most are picked up by security and wind up here at the Red Cross Kitty Colony beside the Jim Graham building. If you have one lost, just go to a security or policeman. We have all the background, and they will help you find them. Parents should also fill out kitty ID tags. Anybody that has a child under five years old needs to tag them. We have these at every information booth on the fairground. The kitty colony only takes in children under age 12. Parents of older kids need their own safety plan. One of the best things you can do for older kids is to pick a designated meeting spot. That way, if you get separated, everyone will know where to meet up. Make it someplace big, like the Ferris wheel, so it can be seen from any spot on the fairground. I'm Dr. Alan Mask with the WRL TV 5 News Health Team. Now, Dr. Mask, as there are also between 75 and 100 uniformed officers patrolling the fairgrounds when the gates are open, and those officers are happy to help with lost children. This new world technology meets the old world of colonial crafts in the village of yesteryear. That's where one artist keeps the old art of silversmithing alive. I like to take shapes that I find in nature and try to mimic them in metal. That's what really intrigues me and inspires me. Silversmithing is the outlet for Dan Dye's creative expression at the North Carolina State Fair's Village of Yesteryear. Dye doesn't have to go searching far and wide to get ideas for his beautiful silver creations. He says he's inspired by nature, things we marvel at every day, leaves, flowers. <laughs> At his workshop in Raleigh, Dye uses the tools of his trade to make a sand dollar. Nothing fussy, just the simplicity of nature captured uniquely in the timelessness of silver. I've had people ask me how I dip my sand dollars, so I must be getting pretty close to the real thing. 
pins, necklaces, rings, Christmas ornaments. In every piece, Di sees a story. I have a favorite Christmas ornament. It's the Star of Bethlehem that I first made for my mother to give as a gift. Di expects he'll have a load of Christmas requests to fill from customers who visit his booth at the village of yesteryear, a place he calls a little-known treasure off the midway. There are people there that have their things on permanent display at the Smithsonian. There are some really fine craftspeople there. He's one of them. Dan Dye and nearly 100 other craftspeople are demonstrating their art in the village this year. You can find it near Gate 8 by the lake. Many of you, we know it, are sitting there at home right now wondering, what's the big deal about high definition? Well, we're going to show you coming up. Plus, a traffic lesson to make sure the only bumper car you're involved in is the ride. I'm trafficologist Mark Roberts. All these people translate into a lot of cars. Here's a quick lesson on how to avoid state fair gridlock. Funnel cakes, Ferris wheels, and farm animals. Almost everyone loves something about the North Carolina State Fair. Then there's the traffic. At certain times, it can get very frustrating. To avoid jams and delays, timing and approach are everything. Come off peak, and if, if possible, come during the week. If possible, take public transportation. Take, I mean, take the cat bus system or take the Amtrak, and you'll be better off. If you can't come off peak and mass transit is not an option, be prepared for delays and possibly detours. To simplify things, the experts say there is one best way to drive into the fairgrounds. What I would recommend to everyone is to utilize Wade Avenue and Edwards Mill Road and just pay close attention to the media advisory reports, uh, the message board signs that will be provided by the DOT and the troopers. Here's what the captain is talking about. Most fairgoers use either I-40 or the I-440 Beltline. Wade Avenue intersects both 40 and 440. Get onto Wade and look for the Edwards Mill exit. The Edwards Mill exit leads to the free parking lots around the arena and Carter-Finley Stadium. The only other free parking lot is at the corner of Hillsborough Street and Blue Ridge Road. And there is one small bit of good news about State Fair traffic this year. Nearby Carter-Finley Stadium will be empty both Saturdays, so no clash between State Fair traffic and NC State traffic. David? Yeah, good news that the Carolina State game is in Chapel Hill tomorrow. Mark, thank you. Now, by now, you have already seen the tremendous difference in the picture quality of high-definition television, even if you have a standard set. Tom Lawrence explains the technology. Stephen White works long hours at his computer job and enjoys his time at home. His bachelor pad boasts a 46-inch high-definition TV display. I've always been an early adopter, um, and I, I believe that people won't buy technology until they see it. Somebody has to do it. And more people are doing it, investing thousands of dollars in digital television. What the old ones did. Eric Larson says DTV offers more than great pictures. There are a number of additional stations that come on the same uh, bandwidth or the same series of channels. And for example, when there's a storm coming, WRAL will often broadcast the radar images on one of those second or third channels. Even though inside, Stephen's antenna yeah, brings in the best quality widescreen digital picture, theater quality sound, and clarity not possible on TVs found in most homes. The highest quality version of digital television is high definition TV. Wide screen displays feature a 16 by 9 picture ratio. Today's standard is 4 by 3. Another difference, 1,080 lines of resolution versus about 400 lines. A major difference between standard analog TV and high definition television is the amount of detail in the picture. Now for those of you watching me in standard definition television, you may say, well old Tom looks pretty good standing there. But if you're watching me in high definition, every blemish shows up, you can count virtually every hair in my beard. <laughs> Time for makeup. There are concerns about cost and lack of programming. Despite those concerns, Jim Goodman, a leader in the development of digital television, says the industry must change to be competitive in the digital future. As we have more high definition program, as the retailers, the set people that sell TV sets get more HD sets, on the floor and do more demonstrations, I think this is going to take off um, like a rocket.
Tom Lawrence, WRAL TV 5 News, Raleigh. Now for lots of kids, the fair is about more than rides, games, and food. It's about bragging rights. Farm reporter Dan Wilkinson introduces us to Susan Vick and her cow. Showing livestock at the North Carolina State Fair, it's a family tradition. Many families have been showing animals for four and five generations in a row. I love showing cows. It's my favorite thing to do in 4-H. For months now, hundreds of young people across the state have been getting up early and making the long walk to the barn before first light. You just have to go on and get up and look forward to it. And after you start working with her, you, you understand why you didn't lay in bed all that time. And the work pays off with a bond of love and understanding between the two. Just the way she looks at me when I come up, I'm able to go in her pen and just put her hotter on just like I would if she was already tied up, but she's really used to me now. And there are lessons to learn even after the project is over. You never lose that sense of being around them and you still want to come back up and work with them all the time, but there comes a point when they have to go back to the pasture and just be themselves. And at the end of the cold early mornings and the countless buckets of feed, there may be a blue ribbon. I've thought about it before. It would it would be really nice to win the grand championship, but if I don't, that's okay too, because I've gotten the grand championship of all just being able to work with these animals. Dan Wilkinson, WRAL TV 5 News, Franklin County. <laughs> What a beauty. Dan reminds us that the public is invited to all of the livestock shows. Oh, and they are great shows, yeah. too. Meteorologist Chris Thompson is here on a day where we don't necessarily need the Doppler, no. but there is a very unique marriage, very unique, a unique marriage between <laughs> HD and the Doppler. Yeah, there's a, it's, a, it's a broadband, so there's a lot of data that can be transmitted, and one of the things that we're transmitting to is the Doppler. And if you have digital TV, a digital receiver, go to 53.2, and you'll see the continuous feed of the Doppler. Or if you're on Time Warner Cable, Channel 256 carries that feed, a continuous feed of our Doppler, and which is nice uh, when there's bad weather, and it's nice when you don't need it too, and that's the situation we're in right now. A gorgeous day out here at the State Fair. A view of the Midway will show folks are out, and you can see a little bit of a breeze out there, but certainly not much. It is just absolutely beautiful. The view of the southeast U.S. will show high pressure and control. This has been the story for much of the week and will continue to be the story for quite some time. It's just not changing. Systems back to our west will ride up to the north through the Great Lakes. As we look into tomorrow, we can see high pressure still over us. The systems gaining a little moisture back into the Midwest will be a soggy day there. But again, it's a blocking high forcing those systems up into the Great Lakes and to our north. So uh, just a, a fabulous forecast as we start off the, uh, the State Fair. 78 degrees right now, the dew point 41, an indication of how cool it may get tonight. Humidity 26%, north wind at 3, offering a little relief. Very nice pressure falling now from 30.24. And uh, again, just relatively cloudless skies out there. It is just absolutely beautiful. And this temperature is about 5 degrees above where it should be. Clear into tonight. And again, if you're coming on out, you may want to dress, a, a, bring a jacket because it's going to, temperatures will drop quickly once the sun goes down with the dry air in place. Mid 40s for the overnight low with very light winds. As we head into tomorrow morning to start things off again, either side of 50 degrees, uh, sunniest of skies. Winds will be uh, calm, if at all. And then as we get through the day, things will warm up quickly once the sun goes up. And by afternoon, again, just cloudless skies, the high temperature, either side of 80 degrees. A west-southwest wind will pick up just a bit, offering a little relief out there as it gets a little warm in the sun out here today. If the five-day will show a continuation of more of this beautiful weather with uh, 80 degrees again uh, in the forecast as we uh, hit Sunday. Again, cloudless skies, morning lows getting up there into the mid-50s. By the time we get into the work week, we'll start to see some cloudiness roll in. That'll keep temps down just a bit. And by, uh, oh, Tuesday into Wednesday, temperatures back down to where they should be in the low 70s. But all in all, even beyond five days, all the models are very dry, keeping things uh, very nice. I think the, uh, the folks planning the fair are very happy with this forecast. <laughs> they are. They are. Chris, thank you. Okay. High definition will change the way you see WRAL. Coming up, we'll take you on a tour of our new facility, plus show you what HD television offers that traditional sets do not. Around and around it was going. Despite the fancy rides, some of the old staples are still the most popular. And the same goes for WRAL's conversion to high definition. In fact, the transition will allow you to count on us more than ever. Jim Payne shows us why our news will look better, even if you don't buy a new set. 
it's like going to the movie. And this will be your stage for local news, a 100% digital stage. Even if you don't upgrade to a high definition TV set, WRAL News will look better. And you're going to see a clearer picture. It's going to have more definition in it. It should be brighter. The colors are probably going to come through even, even clearer. WRAL's tradition of a working newsroom will continue. This new one is wider than it is long, with work areas right behind the set, bringing all the news gathering action closer to you. We made the, the vistas wide, the, the scenes wide for people to see. So when they watch the news, they're going to see a heck of a lot more. More than, than they have in the past. Now, not only do we have to worry about what's in front of us, meaning the anchors and uh, the graphics that we use, we have to worry about what's behind them now because there's so much resolution. We'll also be able to change the look of the studio because this new set rotates. You've got the weather center in the background, on time traffic, the entire newsroom, the data center. And because the picture is so clear, if somebody in the background is slacking off, you'll see it clear as day. This probably has a serial number of 0405. The new look you'll see will come right through this, a brand spanking new high definition video switcher. The manuals just got here, <laughs> so um, we're going to be doing some studying and you know we'll have homework on the weekend. Just one piece of an HD technology upgrade where you'll see the difference on the same set you have right now. Jim Payne, WRAL TV 5 News. Time Warner Cable offers high definition television in this area, so you don't necessarily need a new HD antenna to receive WRAL HD Channel 53. When you turn on WRAL DT, you'll see high definition programming almost 24 hours a day. WRAL's Deborah Morgan shows us what you can see. I would watch high definition programming even if the program was not that great. Joe Colson is one of the few people in our area who can see true HD TV. He's had a set for about a year. The brightness, the clarity, the brilliance of the color is like the difference between black and white and color television. It's it's been wonderful. <laughs> it's all here. CBS offers 17 shows in high definition, mostly in prime time. Right here at WREL, we've brought you Pops in the Park, the moving of the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, the Sistine Chapel, a special on our water quality, and more, all in HD. Welcome to detention. Dan Oliver produces a WREL program for and about middle school children called centralexpress.com. To Dan, not only is the HD picture more sharp, the format allows him to put more action on the screen. I think it gives you more flexibility. I I've wanted to shoot in widescreen for 20 years and just kind of waiting for TV to catch up. This is called Master Control. It's where we send out the HD programs. Right now it's operating for all but about six hours a day, but soon that will change. And as more people embrace the technology, obviously, uh, the program suppliers and the program producers will be providing more product in high definition. Those shows include our newscasts and the Super Bowl. The technology also allows you to see four NCAA tournament games on one channel. So the technologies not only allow you to see a much better picture, it allow us to send you more programming and more product. And people like Joe can't wait. I love this high definition stuff and the more programming options we have, the more we'll watch high definition. Deborah Morgan, WREL TV5 News. And so our next HD project will be the Raleigh Christmas Parade live on November 18th. If you haven't seen HD TV in person, you can go to just about any major audio video store and get a demonstration. You won't believe what you'll see. Well, what an incredible day. We hope you enjoyed being part of this history making newscast as much as we have. It's been a great afternoon. We want to give a special thanks to Panasonic for help making all of this possible. We leave you now with a photo essay of the sights and sounds of the North Carolina State Fair high definition style. Can you help me advertise, carry around the fair, carry it on your shoulder like a soldier, and if you carry it under your arms, you'll keep dry all day, all night. All right, watch this. Watch you watch. Look, look. Ooda Buddha, I'm gonna do the Ooda Buddha, watch. Best cut your ham biscuit you ever had right here, Apex Lions Club. Look at that ham biscuit. Bye,